have a problem if no one else can help and if you can find them maybe you can watch the video team. all right so we are live that was a, a little bit of a delay sorry about that everybody um, I'm Brian. I have a channel on YouTube called The Vapor Chronicles. Welcome to The Vape Team, Episode 3. Three weeks behind us, and it's been a hell of a fun time, hopefully for you guys too, but definitely for myself. Uh, tonight is going to be a really interesting live show. We, we were just spending the past like 15 minutes just discussing topics, and I can already tell that we're not going to have any problem with uh, coming up with stuff to talk about. Um, tonight we have a special guest with us. And his name is, you probably seen it before, if you watch YouTube vape reviews and videos. Love him or hate him, you got to respect him, because he really adds a lot of uh, information, especially on my videos. You know, he's always giving me heads up, hints, tips, tricks. He vapes a ton of hardware. He always has something uh, constructive to say or something negative to say, depending if that's, you know, if you deserve it, probably. <laughs> so I'd like to introduce DJ Quiff or D J Quiff. Is that correct? Absolutely, D D David right. J Quiff. <laughs> David, welcome, now David. You know Thanks my for first name. Us. It's no longer a mystery. <laughs> <laughs> we now have a face to a name, and uh, he's going to share with him what he's vaping and uh, a little bit about himself, and we'll introduce him. Here you go, David. Um, well, actually, you know, I've been a big devil's advocate about the DNA 40, and obviously tonight I'm running a DNA 40 on the Hanna Mods. Um, my only complaint about it is I, at long term, I've, I've read enough information that I'm kind of concerned about people uh, vaping on nickel long term. And I'm actually hoping that future chips will use titanium or some other metal. Hopefully, canthal will be a lot easier for everybody. Uh, you know, don't get me wrong. I, you'll see me complain about the nickel long term. I'm not going to be vaping on this for the next five years. But for short term, you know, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a nice device. I know there's a lot of people have been having uh, uh, problems with them. So we'll talk about that soon. Cool. That's because <laughs> that's you're going to be, uh, you'll be dead in six months from vaping on nickel. There you go. <laughs> 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 All right. So what kind of juice are you vaping on right now? Uh, right now, I'm doing five pawns and, well, I actually got about 10 or 15. Carnage is my other favorite, so Animal Carnage is, is the other primary juice that I'm vaping on tonight. Cool. Both tasty juices. I, I like them myself. Uh, I'm not really a Red Vines fan. I wish they made, like, a strawberry Twizzler from Animal. Um, but, you know, I think Animal will probably come out with some other flavors soon, hopefully, because they seem to do a pretty good job. I'm not a fan of that juice. What no, animal? My, uh, car, uh, carnage, huh? Hmm. Don't like it. That's why we all have so many flavors, because we all have what we like, you know what I mean? Uh, I'm always on that never-ending quest to find that flavor. Lately, for me, I've been hitting this breakfast at Telios, um, the milk. Oh, I can't wait. wait. I know Mike just ordered some, and uh, let me tell you something. Every single person that I have had try this, and I, I, hang, I go to my local vape shops and I talk to a lot of different people, anyone that hits this is like blown away by how excellent the flavor profile is on this. It's like a Fruity Pebbles, but like it's sat in milk for like a couple hours and then you strained out the Fruity Pebbles and just poured the milk in a glass. That's what it tastes like. And I hear that a lot, so it could be bullshit, but I'm telling you, if you get it, no matter what you think, it's really, really good. So anyway... How about you, Buck Kickers? What are we doing with you tonight? We are vaping on the same exact thing we were vaping on last week. The SX Mini, the same build. It's a twisted 30-gauge build in the, uh, the Little Boy RDA. Uh, I think we're in 0.3 or 4 ohms, 50 watts. And I'm actually vaping on the same damn juice I was vaping on last week. I'm vaping on this, uh, this is the Birch Beer Vape. This is by Keystone Vapor out of Pennsylvania. It's good stuff. Um, I've actually been vaping that black note during the day all the time out of the K fund lately. Um, that's the only reason I'm still vaping this 120 mil bottle from last week. That and I've cut down a bit. I think I only vaped about 120 mils this entire week, which, uh, for those of you who know me, is about half what I usually vape. And how much does Keystone pay you to vape their juice on, on the show? <laughs> You know what? They didn't pay me anything, but Steel Vapor should start paying me soon because that's what I vape 99% of the time, and I'm always pushing that stuff. 
Well, I'll make sure I forward this a copy of this uh, live show to them. <laughs> you should. You should. How about you, Mike? What's up, brother? What's up? All right. Today I'm using actually my uh, Segeli 150 watt. I got the uh, white carbon fiber J wrap on it with the Mutation X. I got a parallel coil in here. It's a Tiger coil, Clapton coil, with some infamous trill. That's one setup. Then I got my SX Mini, which also has infamous trill on the smoke. Uh, and I have a sub tank mini with uh, on the DNA forty with Loopy. And where, where do you get Loopy from? From wetvapes.com. Oh, wetvapes. Try it out. Awesome I've ordered from them before actually, and uh, they ship yeah. really fast because I'm on the East Coast. I love yep. that. Yeah, they got some good juice. There's a, their Loopy right here. There's their bottle. It's a little girlish bottle, but uh, it's pretty good juice. If you like those Mike ends up passing away before any of us, we need to make sure that he gets embalmed with loopy. Yeah, that's, well, I want some of that milk. Up. I'm like, I'm looking forward to the milk and that other one. What's the other one? The crunch. The crunch. Yeah, the milk and the crunch. That th th those are the only two cereal vapes that um, I don't know if you've ever heard of. Like, I think it's called Alpha Omega, something like that. From I think it's Telios or Telios. It's still the yeah. same company. Yeah, the same company, but this is their breakfast line, and they only have two flavor profiles so far that have cereal in them, but I'll tell you what, bang, really, really good. Have you uh, tried Cereal Killer yet? Uh, yeah. I've tried almost everything. If I hear about a cereal vape, I hit it right away. Oh, uh, yeah. How do you but, like it you compared know, to Looper? You know, for me, Looper, I have a bottle of actual Looper right here. Um, Looper is a weird vape for me. Um, it has like a bitterness, almost like a, a sour milk flavor to it. I don't know if it's just my taste buds or, you know, the fact that I drink like 20 cups of coffee a day. No, I had the same issue. That uh, You couldn't even get the fruit in it. There was something else with the fruit, you know, with the cereal. I just can't pinpoint that flavor. You might, you might not like the one from Steel Vapor then. That has that little bit of bitterness to it as well. Same thing. You know, what, what I found is there's, like, five different companies. Like, wet, I've tried Wet Vapes. I tried uh, Mount Baker Vapors. I tried Dr. Crimmies, which Mike was gracious enough to send me, a, a, like, almost like I was locked up in prison, like a care package or in the hospital. Um, I tried their Fruity Pebbles. All of them taste like they have the same base fruit. that They, they order their flavors from the same company, and they all remind me of the same juice, and I'm not a huge fan. It takes a special company that's going to mix flavors that I haven't tried before that really hits that spot for me, you know. Yeah. And I got another Dr. Kremis coming. Uh, I have I ordered their Fruit Loops with uh, milk. The one I sent you was uh, their uh, Fruity Pebbles with a custard base. So I still have to try that, Mikey. <laughs> so what, yeah. what was your thought on it, Mike? How did you like it? Well, it, I don't know. I think the custard was overpower in it, but I think it needs to be steeped a little more. I think that's yeah. what it is. You know, that's the thing about these juices. You got when you get them, you can't like do them right away. You got to put them away and let them steep. You know. Yeah. Put it away yeah. from somewhere dark and forget about yeah. it. You know. Yeah. One of, one of the things I find fascinating, and, and this is probably one of the reasons why I've steered clear of doing a ton of juice reviews on my channel, because I, I'm not like a, a vape connoisseur when it comes to being an expert. You know, the, um, I, I enjoy vaping a lot, and I like what I like. Just like I like certain, like I went to an Indian restaurant last night for dinner, and it was fabulous. But some people hate curry and don't like Indian food. Um, but I do. Re I watch juice reviews and I listen to a lot of people talk about what they like. Like right now, I'm reading the comments here, and people are like, "Dr. Crimmy's Pebbles is on point. Looper isn't a cereal vape, in my opinion." From uh, Teresa, and you know, everybody's got their own opinions, and nobody's really right. It's what do you want to pay your hard-earned dollars for to throw in your tank, and what gets you through the day and puts a smile on your face. I mean, that's really what it matters. Um, but I know when I started vaping, and this cabinet over here on the corner will 
will shed some light on how much money I've spent sampling juices. Um, there's some juices that, you know, if you don't grab it to throw it in your tank, you don't like it. I mean, it's that simple, you know. So. It's highly subjective. You know, I, I've, I've stayed away from doing a lot of juice reviews for the same exact reason. You know, what I love, you might hate, you know, and I'm aware of that. You know, it's kind of like restaurant critics. They always annoy the shit out of me because, you know, you, you go to a fantastic restaurant, you love the food, and you read a review from some guy, you know, tearing it apart because he thinks it sucks. You know, it's just, it's subjective. I don't really think you can, you can judge it on that level, you know, for everyone. You know, in one way or another, yes, you can. Like, okay, maybe their PG, VG mix is off. Maybe their flavorings are just shit. Maybe it tastes like chemicals. You know, maybe they're using cheap nick. Yeah, you can judge it on that. But from a flavor profile standpoint, I mean, that's just pure, purely subjective in my opinion. I don't even know what cheap nick tastes like. It tastes well, like imagine, pepper. Imagine when you go to the grocery store and you say, well, I want cereal. Mm -hmm. I mean, think about how many different cereals there are going up and down the line. So, I mean, you know, you may not like Looper, and you may like Cereal Killer. You may like, you know, there's a half a dozen of them out there that are pretty darn good. Yeah. But now, what's interesting, though, is, like, if I get Marshmallow Mateys, which is the generic brand of Lucky Charms, <laughs> it tastes like Lucky Charms. If you like Lucky Charms. <laughs> if you like Lucky Charms, exactly. Um. I think I'd like to start a channel kind of like Hell's Kitchen, like Gordon Ramsay, and I'll, like, go to these, like, clean labs where they make juice, and I'll judge, like, cleanliness, and I'll judge the workers, and then I'll, like, try juice and then spit it out all over the floor and say it's unacceptable <laughs> and absolutely horrible. <laughs> and slap the guy in the face, right? <laughs> you guys think? All wrong. You're all wrong. Wrong. Bad. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely horrible. <laughs> wow. All right, well... Eric Chamberlain writes, I've never tried a cereal vape, just does not appeal to me. Eric, I felt the same way. I did, didn't appeal to me, but uh, once I tried it, I was like, oh, shit, I waited this long. I'll try it. You never know. Stay here. here. Yeah. Uh, I'm, as we're sitting here, I'm gonna be. I'm going to be taking apart this sub tank because last night at the said Indian restaurant I had dinner at, I had this DNA 40 uh, firing in my pocket. Oh, God. And uh, you know, you know that feeling like when you start feeling that heat against your leg, mm -hmm. and you know the shit's been firing for like five minutes, and it should have auto shut off, but you've probably like adjusted your pants and it's set again. Oh um, my God. So anyway, the coil's burnt. I'm We've all been there. I, hope. That. I mean, even considering all that, I'm surprised. I mean, you just would wouldn't think it would happen. I'm telling you, the battery case, and this is an authentic vapor flask. Oh, sure. By the way. I want to share this, and I know I'm hogging screen time a little bit. I apologize. This vapor flask is way overpriced. I mean, $290 that I paid for this, and I'm telling you, I like it and all, but it's just a piece of metal with a $60 chip in it. I mean, it's nothing that spectacular that blows my mind that it's worth, you know, I, I prefer my SX Mini over the vapor flask all day long, coming and going, so... I think that's why I didn't jump on it to get it. I almost did. I almost got the the one from Vapor DNA. They got uh, the carbon fiber. It? Yeah, the carbon fiber with the red buttons, the Project uh -huh. Bubble and Flask Man. It, so looked I had cheap, this. it looked cheap though, with that little cheap wrap on there. If you look yeah. at the picture carefully, I'm not sure if it's a wrap. It's or a not. wrap. It's definitely There's a wrap. A, yeah. I mean, I could always get a wrap. But uh, I had it in my shopping cart, and I was like ready to buy it, and I, then I said no. No, I'm not. I'm like, come on, the $325 on that, I was like, no, no, no. Now, if it was made out of solid carbon fiber, sure, but if you look at the picture carefully, it shows where there's like a wrap, where it kind of yeah. one side over the top of the other. And I uh, said, oh, for that, I looked at it too. Speaking of solid, speaking of solid carbon fiber, fiber David, um, our favorite company, SMY, <laughs> just, just <laughs> you're going to shit. Did it blow up yet? yet? Yeah. Oh, I see that. Yeah, I see SMY that. 40, right? It's the 40 watt variable voltage. Um, I'm sorry, variable wattage mod, and it fires down to 0.3 ohms. Now leave that in I your pocket. You, look at this. Look at this. This is 100% real carbon fiber on here. No shit. Oh, I know it. Yeah. When I open the bottom, mm -hmm. look at the inside of this bad boy. Copper. Copper. It that is. is it, I mean, it is gorgeous. This thing. Um, Teresa, it works. 
Yeah, leave it well. in your pocket once, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on fire! <laughs> You'd be like Rick James. I uh, have the comments. Uh, What's that K Mastermind? SMY for life. <laughs> <laughs> you know, let me tell you something. I got I got to share this. I promised my wife. My <laughs> wife loves. She loves to bust my ass on April Fool's Day. <laughs> so I get home from a long day of work yesterday. Actually, it was about six hours worth of work because I like to work soft. But um, my, I get home. Mike says, "Hey Brian, do you want to you want to meet up on Hangouts and we'll chat for a minute?" So we start to chat. And then all of a sudden he looks down and he goes, oh, I just got an email from, uh, looks like a lawyer. Sure. And he starts to read off and it's this legal document and he's reading off all this legalese and he's telling me about how, you know, um, the Vapor Chronicles, Mike Vapes and the Vape Team are being sued by SMY <laughs> oh, Jesus. for, uh, what was it, Mike? Defamation, defamation of character. <laughs> yeah, defamation of character. And, and it also said copyright infringement. Oh, there you go. <laughs> and, and, you know, after the fact, after I realized it was a big April Fool's hoax, that my wife, who doesn't even know Mike, called him up, set this whole thing up, um, and Mike holds a picture of my wife up on the screen, and it says April Fool's. Oh, jeez. <laughs> my heart, because all I heard was her in my head saying, I told you those stupid videos are going to cause a problem. You were going to lose the house. You know? <laughs> so, Amy, I love you. Thank you for, uh, for getting me. You're the best I've ever met at making me have a heart attack at a young age. She probably has a life insurance policy on me. You know she does. I yeah. did a good acting job, though, right, Brian? My God, Mike. Blows my I mind. I don't even know if you're really an honest, uh, if you live in Queens or not. Yeah, my face, I had the face as if I was the horrified reading it, like, oh, my God, we're, we're screwed. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Nice. Um, so let's let's do this. Let's talk for a minute. Of, let's go down the line. Let's start with you, David. What kind of batteries do you use? Where do you get them? And uh, why do you like them? Uh, and also, so another thing with it, maybe what's your favorite device? I'd like to know that. Yeah, what's your favorite device? Hmm. That's a good question. Okay, um, Samsung 25 hours. I get them from a place on Amazon. Uh, they come pre-packaged in like you know, one of those little plastic clamshell things, uh, two to a pack. Actually, I just got six in the day, so I don't know, got a whole whole mess of them. Um, I'll tell you what sold me on them is the guy at my vape shop said they were good. I'm like, eh, huh, right, yeah. You know, I hear all the stuff about batteries, and I actually had one that self-fired on a Stingray. You probably know I play COD. I was putting it down. Ten minutes later, on a point three, maybe just a little bit under point three, burnt the crap out of my hand. I mean, the mod was that hot. Got a uh, rag, put it around it. It was steaming. It was that bad. The battery didn't uh, vent. I was sold on the battery after that. Uh, they charge fast. Um, so anyway, getting back to the mod. As weird as it is, probably I like this uh, Segali 150. I got this little red one, and uh, that's an Arctic Let's on the see. top. And Lift it up a little. Let's see it. There you go. See it? Nice. Yep. That looks nice. Yeah. And um, what, I got drip the, tip, what drip tip do you have on there? Puffins. It's like this little red thing on the top, so it looks like Santa Claus. Yeah. Sweet. <laughs> That's a nice setup. But you know, it works. It works well, and the Segalis, I've been really you know pleased with them. I, I like it just as much as my two hundred and twenty-five dollar Hanamod. This is the one that's the 4D. It's got the one with the two batteries in it. It's fine. It's a great mod. It's 40 watts. I've got this set right now at 70 watts. Yeah. It ain't going to work. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Very, very quickly, the first thing that really pissed me off big time about my DNA 40, because I have two, I have a Vapor Shark DNA 40, and I have that, that Vapor Flask. They totally underpowered that chip. I mean, I mean, from and, and, you know, I'm going to eat my words because, like, four months ago I said, well, you know, 40 watts should be more than enough for 90% of what I vape. And nowadays I'm finding myself wanting to bump up to maybe 55 or 60 on certain, you know, uh, you know, builds that I do, and it just doesn't have enough power to get me there. Well, you know, you bring up a good point. Do you remember when you first started? I'm going to show you something. Did you all ever use one of these little things? 
Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you go from that, and you think, and then, and, oh yeah, there you go, and then you think you're a big guy, and you get that represent. <laughs> And, and then, oh my God, look at the size of that battery, man! I'm gonna really, you know, be big, big time. And you know, the first mod that I made, uh, Addy, uh, it was 28 gauge, and I thought, oh my God, I was scared to death. It was a dual coil, first build I ever did, dual coil. And then, you know, then you're 26 gauge, and then you're 24 gauge, and now now I'm looking at 20 gauge potential for build. So I mean, and then getting these crazy wires, so um, it's a hobbyist thing, but it's kind of creepy in a way that, you know, you start out at these, you know, very little amount of vape compared to, you know, something like this. This is a quad coil in here, quad 26. It's uh, about a point one eight. Is that the Mutation X? No, that's that uh, CLT version 2 by oh. Infinite on a penny mod. Nice. I've been liking uh, Mutation X, the version 3. I, I, I love this RD. I've got the version 1. I didn't like the version 2, what they did with it. They had those funky uh, triangle screws, and, yeah. and I think they went to the grub screws, if I'm not mistaken, on the uh, version 3. Isn't that right? Uh, ver version 3 got Phillip heads. Or Phillip heads, okay. Actually, yeah. Everybody was complaining about Also, you could put a uh, drip, got the drip tip adapter. So right. you put your own drip tips. That's what I love about it. It does everything that you want it to do. It's nice. That was one of the uh, mods, though, that, I mean, that literally, I had to close it down. I mean, there was just so much airflow with that thing. Yeah. I and mean, to the point of being ridiculous. I think, yeah, I guess even for cloud competition, if you had that thing all the way wide open, I would think that, you know, you're not going to get the right density. I no, mean, it, it, it is. Uh, it, I, I don't even mod. Mod. For the money, you can't beat it. It's great. There's no problem. Yes. For me, with, like, the Mutation X, I have the original one, and I have the version 2. And... Um, Wide open. The only use I have for them wide open is with a very large surface area build on the series box. Then they work great, you know, because you're you're trying to counteract all that heat, you know. So then everything balances out and it works, you know, because it's a balancing act. But um, yeah, on a tube mod, yeah. If you don't like flavor, maybe. <laughs> what do you like? What do you like for batteries, BK? What's your uh, you know, same as him. I use Samsung 25Rs pretty much exclusively. Um, you know, they're easy to find. They haven't been cloned yet as far as I know. Um, I usually pick them up off of Illum Supply, okay? It's like a flashlight type of place online. And uh, I forget what I pay for them. I think they're around 13 or $14 for the pair. And, uh, yeah, I mean, what really sold me on them, though, is <clears throat> I didn't auto-fire one. I vented one. In a mech mod, um, it was a brass Caravella H cigar clone mech mod, and I vented one inside of it. It was a hard short. Okay, it was a very mild venting. It got it got pretty hot. It didn't get as hot as you would think. Flames didn't shoot out of it. It was nothing catastrophic. It was just like, and that was really it. You know, it was like no big deal. I'm like, okay, I'm sold on these batteries, but. You know, having said that, I vape them, you know, with really reckless builds, you know, 0 .08, 0 .04, <laughs> like just screwing around, and I never had a problem with them. Like, never. Now, if you put the camera on this, I thought this was reckless. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't normally vape like that, but I do occasionally, just for the hell of it. You know, I'll, I'll do something kind of ridiculous with 20 don't, gauge or something. Don't drink and drip. Yeah, tell me about that. I was <laughs> in an accident the other day doing that. <laughs> I've been dripping and driving for the past two weeks. Don't drip and drive right here. Well, thank God you're in freaking Connecticut. Yeah, I know, right? Well, you know, you see how we drive up here, right? Yep. Not we as make, we as make Not as as assholes. Yeah, but those state troopers are bastards there. Have to be careful. Oh, they're bricks. Yeah. You know, living up here sucks. I mean... I don't trust it, you know, as far as the legalities of stuff with vaping. They're just fucking pricks. You know, I, as these guys know, I get I get my vape mail sent to Pennsylvania. <laughs> right. I'm afraid of some weird law dropping and my shit getting seized and, like, the Connecticut State Trooper showing up in my freaking house. What about you, Mike? What, what, what kind of batteries do you like? I like the Samsungs, the 25Rs. And here's a new one that I like that I've... Supposed to be, from what I've been hearing, the best battery out there right now. 
because obviously we can't get the Sony's. Uh, the LG HE4s, they're a yellow battery. That's them right there. So this is supposed to be real good too. So. Uh, yeah, the LG is in my Samsung's question. Samsung's question. One second. Segeli does use a Yihi chip. So. To you, Jacques. Well, I always said it did. Oh no, it's someone's question. On uh, I'm reading questions. Oh, okay. Yeah. Questions on the side here. Someone was saying that the Segeli uh, doesn't use uh, Yihi chips. Oh, it does use Yihi. It actually does use Yihi chips. Yeah. What you do is uh, you take the batteries out, keep the fire button pressed, put the right. batteries in, and the chip will come up on the screen. It'll tell you what chip it is, and you'll see it's a Yihi chip. Yeah. Um, I also, you know, and by the way, uh, this live show is sponsored by Samsung. Uh, <laughs> no. It, you know, it's funny. We were Before we went live, we were talking together about topics, and we talked about batteries, and I swear to you, every single one of us went down the line and said the Samsung 25Rs. Um, now, I have batteries throughout my journey in vaping, so I have some EFS, I have some um, Sony VTC4s, um, but the Samsungs, man, they just, they work all the time, and they really do charge, it seems, faster. But, you know, in the end, as long as I can actually uh, turn my, my device on and vape, I don't really give a shit, because I always have extra batteries. I always have batteries on the charger. Um, I use, what what is it, a Nightcore, the older version with the four charging ports? Yeah. Works well for me. Um, Did you ever uh, check out the Luke V2? What is it called? Luke V2. Right here. Yeah, with the digital readout screen on it. And this the reason is, is, is it goes two amps on two batteries for charging. It, it's oh, so it's two amps per channel. There's yeah. a new one. There's a new one now that has a meter that tells you how many uh, milliamp hours you have in your battery, too. Who makes that, Mike? I think it's uh, that same brand. It's a new version. Is it? Yeah, but I think that I if you're charging it. four batteries, it uh, cuts it down to one amp per battery. For charging, I think that's the that's the only reason I I didn't like it. I'm, I otherwise, that, I think um, it's great. Charging the Vapor Shark on the micro USB that they, they came with it. I'm telling you, man, two amp charging is the shit. It's really good. Yeah, and the Samsungs charge really fast too. Uh, I generally uh, get mine down about 3.7 volts at the lowest, maybe 3.6 once in a while, and I'll, I'll have a full charge in an hour and a half. Yeah. Yeah, it's another thing I love about them, and, and longevity as well. I mean, you know, I can't speak on super long-term longevity, but the first 25 hours that I bought months and months and months ago, I'm still using, and they still work fantastic, and I have super sub on them. I have some that look like they have herpes. <laughs> you know, the wrapper gets all spattered up from the heat. You see Big Lou's in that review? Yeah. Oh yeah. my God! <laughs> oh, that was those are that are almost oh my that God. Bad, not as bad as this. <laughs> well, no, really, that's just condensation underneath the wrapper. It's not. Those are, those are zombie batteries. <laughs> I, I just thought it was some juice getting down in there, and you know, he's got a bunch of little holes in it. I know, I understand why he's getting them. You know, if your battery starts to look like the Statue of Liberty on the bottom, on the positive and negative, you got trouble. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Isn't the Statue of Liberty? There you go. Felix LeBron put it up. Uh, X-Star VC4. It's a new charger. just came out. That's the one. Mike, why don't you contact these uh, charging manufacturers and set up a uh, maybe a, a vape team version that we can have on the show? Well, that'd be nice, huh? That would be hey, cool. What, it would be great if they could have four batteries at two amps per channel, all four channels. That would be great. I, I'm just not aware of any what right now. Even if it went into two outlets and it split it into two, would you be okay with that? Oh, it went I mean, you might as well get two Luke V, you know, V2s. So. Honestly, I wouldn't care if I had one that I had to plug into my dryer plug. <laughs> <laughs> like seriously, you know, like twelve batteries, two amps a piece, bam, I'd be set. I'd be able to vape for like two hours on those. I've heard of some people trying to charge their batteries at four amps, and I don't think I I think that these uh, batteries are capable of doing it. But I, I just think you're going to ruin the battery doing that. What do you I know when I go to bed, I switch it down to a half an amp. Uh, I just leave mine at two all the time. Nah, maybe bad. Well, you know, thing is, is this when you're doing a mech, 
the problem is with the mech is that you notice your battery drop off, you know, pretty fast. Yeah. And so I try to top them off, and I know that's not great for the battery either, but it's the way I do it. Well, you know, I don't know. I, I, I really try to get mine back on the charger between 3.85 and 3.7. I try to. You know, uh, every once in a while, you know, I'll be stuck out of the house or something like that. You know, I'm just, I just don't have enough batteries on me. I'll run them down in like 3.6, 3.5, but that's rare, you know. Well, on a Segelli, if you're starting to push more than about 50, maybe 70, 50, 60 watts, if you get below about 40%, it may not fire. Yeah. So. Well, no, mine, I just actually put them on the charger. I was at 37% mm -hmm. at uh, 55 watts, and it was firing fine on my, on my, on my 100 watt plus. Wow. I don't remember what the the drop off was. Like I said, it was close to that. It may have been as low as 30%. I, it yeah, just I looked at it, and I saw 37. Well, now, which batteries are you using in that box, Mark? Um, Me? Oh. Yeah. Right here, baby. 25 hours. 25 hours. Are they, are they like... Uh, yeah, really? both of my Segelis, I got uh, 25 hours in them. Are they really fresh, or...? What's that? Yeah, they're new. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, two months old, three months old. That's the thing. The thing I like about the okay. It depends upon how many you know watts you're trying to push. I mean, like I said, I was running the Arctic around 70 watts, and it was right around 30, 40 percent somewhere in there, and then it just went fire. You know, it's the way it was. My fault. I normally 50 percent try to do it, but you know, you're out and about. Speaking of out and about, did you guys ever? Uh, I don't know how many mechs you do. Did you ever see one of these things? Yep. Cup holders. That's from yep. Beyond Big, right? Yes. They're great. They make them for uh, different mods too. Uh, I, well, I'm just tired, you know. I'll bring you know three or four of these in the car, and uh, you know, before it used to be this them falling all over the place, or you put them down on the seat, and then you find oh shit, you get you know juice all over your seat, and you're like crap, you have to clean that, that up. So those things were great. I'm glad they finally did those. But they make them for the Vapor Shark. Uh, I think they've got them for the Segali and a few others. I think J Raps also has them too. I like to rub, I like to rub the juice in my leather. When it goes yeah, on the there you go. car. <laughs> I do the same thing. <laughs> it's yeah. like conditioner. It is like conditioner. It's an oil, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and your car smells like you have one of those little Christmas trees in there. Oh, absolutely. Better. Even better. Well, you know, the one thing that I love about vaping, uh, I, I'm not in the north right now. I'm in Florida. But I remember it's 20 below zero. I'm up in Chicago. I am literally freezing my ass off in the garage. I'm doing this, oh, sorry, with a cigarette. I'm doing this with a cigarette, freezing my ass off. And I just love it now that you, you know, you can vape inside. My wife doesn't care at all, thank God. And, uh, you know, it's been a godsend. That and then, you know, for the health, too. Oh, I don't yeah. want to know, have you guys noticed in your cars, do you guys get a film of uh, VG, PG over your oh, window? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. My kitchen, my kitchen too. My bathroom, my office, the windows—they get they get this heavy film on them, and it it's a pain in the ass to wipe off. But that, that's really the only downside. I've noticed, like, I, I have a lot of antiques and stuff, you know, old wood furniture. I've noticed, like, I just rub the VG in. So it gets like, a film on it. And it really, you no, know, it it makes the old mahogany and stuff really glow. Furniture wax. <laughs> It is. It's like uh, what's that stuff? Plus, not pledge. Um, yeah, uh, glade, uh, glade, uh, glade or whatever. I don't. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, <laughs> your, your your better half comes in and you're, she's wondering, what the hell are you doing vaping down the table? Oh, yeah. See, that's what I'm doing. Shiny. <laughs> He's gonna run out of juice, and you'll see him with a lighter, like a crackhead, over the table, trying to get a hit off the table. <laughs> oh yeah. I guarantee you can get a hit off the table in my office. <laughs> It'll be like me last night when I was taking capless uh, RDA hits. Hey, have you ever been like stuck with an RDA and you're running low on juice and you just keep lowering the wattage? <laughs> can you just it's, it's called a DNA 40, brother. It's called a DNA 40. <laughs> Uh, all this fancy new technology. Now I'm waiting for my J to come in. God damn it! It's been two weeks, like every two weeks for like the last three months. Well, you know, the thing is, is this. I think that they're doing the right thing. I mean, the worst thing that they could possibly do 
is to release it and have the firmware bad. At least, thank God, you can upgrade their firmware. I mean, you know, DNA 40, oh, I want to upgrade. Uh, send it back in. I mean, you know, we'll, no, we'll I swap out you. the chip. So I, I think that that's smart. I'm, I'm hoping <clears throat> that all I've heard so far is it does nickel. I have not heard yeah. a thing about titanium. But just in case, today I bought myself some titanium. <laughs> And hoping you still work. use the titanium, David. You're, you're just going to have to, you know. It, I, I tried it. Color. I tried it with it. It just all over the place. You'll, you know, it just doesn't. You, know, it's, you can. Oh, really? So this way, I'm not saying you can't use titanium. If you want it for yeah. temperature control, it's just all over the place. It's not. It doesn't work. But I'll tell you what. Speaking of that, uh, let me see if I can find the coil. Of course, I just put it in there where I can get it. Anyway, I found a new little thing that works perfect just today. Now, one of my buddies at the vape shop told me about it. Is that we're taking twisted 30 gauge nickel 200 and canthal, and we're twisting it together, and it works perfect. With canthal. With canthal. Wow. Yeah, but isn't that dangerous? No. And, and, and I tried the and I tried the uh, cotton test, and it worked fine. I didn't burn my cotton. No, no shit. It's working perfect. 28 and instead, of, and instead of uh, 12 wraps, uh, this one right here is an 8 wrap, um, uh, 3 millimeter, and it came out to uh, 0.15. What gauge are you using? 30. Twisted. Twisted. Can you think you could do twisted 28? Uh, you could. I don't know what that, you, you know, what. I don't know how many wraps you'd have to do with it, though. More. <laughs> mess around with that. Uh, well. Speaking of wire, where do you guys buy your wire from? I get mine off of eBay. Me too. Vape yep. shop. Local vape shop. Yeah, the, the, the vape shop that I've got, thank God, is really good about some of the stuff that they've got there. Yeah, I uh, get uh, Semco. That's what I do. Direct I just want uh, some cheap Samsung 25R batteries and also some uh, good priced uh, lightning vapes. You can get really, really good wire that's cheap from them. I'll tell you the best. If you're just gonna, if you're gonna just use 28 gauge, this is it. This is the one to use. Tempered. Okay, Where's that? Tempered. You gotta buy it from Europe. But it's tempered 28 gauge nickel wire. That's the stuff. What site do you get that off of? I don't know off the top of my head. There's only one place. It's uh, Stealth Vape. Okay, I'm familiar with what's that. What's the What's the benefit of having it tempered? Um, you know how often you have to replace your uh, coil if you use regular 28 beside the being, excuse my French when I say it's a pain in the dick? Uh -huh. um, you don't have that problem. It's almost like doing canthal. It lasts a little bit longer. Um, I don't have the temperature variations. I don't have the hot spot issues. It's the stuff to use right now. The best stuff I found those today, I just tried it for the first time. I've heard about it and I just tried it. In fact, I, was, I sent a picture to Butt when I, right after I was doing the coil is that uh, twist that I'm using. Twisted 30-gauge nickel and canthal twisted together. works great. Oh, nickel and canthal. Nickel and canthal twisted together, 30-gauge. I'm so in, doing in that. Temp control. you got to use it in temp control, though. It works perfect. I tried it on the uh, cotton, no burning. So how many strands are you using? Two nickel and one canthal or one canthal one, and one nickel? One, one each. One and each? Are you spacing the coils? Oh, yeah. I'm on that shit tonight. I'll send you a picture later uh, about how it looks, and it uh, it turned out great. Yeah, yeah. I, I was I was actually surprised. I thought, okay, I'm going to put it in there, I'm going to fire the button, and poof, there goes my cotton. And, and then I was like, what the shit? So I was really pleased with that. Uh, there's a guy over at my vape shop that is, when I say insane about... DNA 40s, I mean, like wackadoodle. I mean, he, he takes every bit that he earns over there and buys DNA 40 stuff. Uh, but uh, and, and he's a guru with it. I mean, to be honest with you about it, and if this is my opinion about it, I think it's made for a K fund. It's not really made for a dripper. Don't get me wrong, you can use a dripper. And I think a lot of things that, that people do wrong with it is instead of using, um, I think most people set their temperature too low. Even on this K fund, I've got it at 470 degrees. If I'm going to go in an RDA, it's going to be 500 or higher. And yeah, it comes out great. Yeah. In exact way. Yeah. Or, I, just, I, I find that the. I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I was going to say, I, I find that the vape is so inconsistent. Like every once in a while, I'll be at 440 or so, and it'll actually be a pretty good vape. 
but it falls off and it just doesn't hold on as well. But one, once I start bumping it up to 480 and above, it ju it's just a much better vape to what I'm accustomed to. You know what I mean? Because I'm usually at like, most of the stuff I vape is around 0.5 ohms, and I'm at about 30 to 45 watts in that range. And uh, for the DNA 40, number one, I put it up to 40 watts every single time. It's always at 40 watts. Um, and I usually set it to about 480 degrees to 510. Well, what I've got this set at, because it's a single coil and it's in uh, K-Fun, I've actually got the wattage set at, well, 26.1 or basically 26 degree, uh, excuse me, 26 watts, and it comes out great. I mean, it's just, you know, one of those things. There's so many variables, and I think that's one of the reasons that uh, temperature control didn't go over so well, besides the fact of nickel, is that it's a pain in the ass. I mean, you know, it's, it's, when I say trial by error, I mean, it's literally trial by error. I mean, who the hell would have thought taking canthal and nickel and twisting them together would be the the answer. And so far, well, now, it seems to be the answer. If you think about it, though, Dave, it actually makes sense because all the DNA 40 is doing is it's it's judging the resistance of the, the nickel wire, okay? And the nickel wire changes its resistance very predictably by temperature, okay? So as long as you have a piece of nickel wrapped in with the canthal, they're going to heat up, and the, the nickel is going to be holding the same temperature as the canthal, so it should read and function correctly. Well, what I thought is that you're going to be reading a mixture of nickel, and you're going to be reading a mixture of, of uh, canthal, and you know, I thought the guy was who suggested it you know, was out of his mind, and I went ahead and I twisted it m myself, put it in there, and I was like, what? I mean, I was totally shocked that it worked. I mean... In my mind, I would say no freaking way, but in reality, yeah, it worked. But if you're not, if you don't want to do that, I'm just trying to tell you, you got to use this tempered stuff. This, I'll put it up there. This is the stuff to get. Tempered 28. Uh, also, 29 gauge, which is another pain he has to get. That was another recommendation from this DNA 40 guru friend of mine. A lot, of, a lot of the British guys use those weird gauges, like 27, 29, stuff like that. Well, that's from Europe. That that uh, that nickel's from Europe. It's the only place you can get it. There's only one place you can buy it, and it's at uh, Stealth Vape. Uh, Eric Chamberlain on the comments over here asked if anybody had tried the DNA 25 with temp control. I don't even know if they're out yet. Are they? I didn't hear anything. I didn't hear about that. It's new yeah, I didn't hear about that either. Huh. I don't know. Also, how, has anybody tried the smoke gimlet nickel coil? Nope. I have. I have. <laughs> Has anybody, including me? Yes, I have. Well, of um, course you have. Speaking of the nickel coils, <clears throat> I've been less than satisfied uh, with the consistency of all of the pre-made coils that come with nickel. Uh, they're hit or miss. You know, that was where I started, like, my first week. And by the way, I'm no expert on DNA 40s. I've only had one for about three weeks now, but I have done a lot of experimenting. And for some reason, the nickel coils that are pre-made, the OCC coils from uh, Kanger, the um, smoke coils, they just, they're not consistent. They're just not. I think it's too, pr you know, building a nickel build requires a lot of focus and a lot of attention to detail. And I just have a feeling that these mass-produced coil heads uh, don't have the attention to detail that's required to give you a solid vaping experience on it. Well, I think if you substituted the word nickel and you just said that in general, I would agree with you anyway. I mean, you know. <laughs> yeah, that is true. I, I, that is I remember true. with uh, Kanger, uh, those point fives. there was a bad run of them, and they were, uh, you know, people were burning them out left and right. And I went to my vapor sh vape shop, and I said, well, do you have the you know, good ones, or how, how was it the you know, ones you're using? They said, they're great. I said, well, give me a box. Yeah. Well, uh, Mike, this is uh, a heads up to Mike Vapes because... This is totally his baby that he told me about, but I've been doing it for two days now. If you just take your uh, little, I have this is a little, I guess this is a, a probe of some sort from Harbor Freight, but um, I take this and I just manipulate the uh, wicking openings on the OCC head and sort of stir up the the cotton because it seems like they pack it in too tight. Yeah. Um, it allows it to wick so much better because I was dry hitting it at like 28 watts, 26 watts on the 0.5 ohm heads, and now I'm up to 35 standard, and it wicks brilliant. So thank you, Mike. Yeah, that made a whole huge difference. Coming out on the K box, it's probably going to go up either uh, Friday or Monday. But uh, in that review for the K box, I uh, basically show you guys what to do, how to make that uh, coil wick better. So. 
check out that uh, Somebody had just asked about the DNA 40 clone, uh, about my review that I did on this bad boy over here. You know, one of the frustrating parts of doing vape reviews is if I spend more than a few hours to a few days with a certain mod, I get behind like crazy on all the new stuff that's come in for me to review. Um, so I would, I'd like to tell you that it's working great and it's performing flawlessly. But truthfully, after getting the Shark in, the Vapor Flask, I got this French company that sent me this 40-watt device in called the Alessa, which is a really cool little 40-watt from France. Um, it's just too much for me to you know, keep up with the long-term effects of the devices I'm reviewing. I just can't do it. I'm sorry. Well, you know, you bring up a good point. I mean, how many times has something, you know, reviewed well, even in your your own personal uh, view on it and, and use of it's great, and then, you know, two months later you find out, oh, my God, you know, this 510's falling apart or, you know, you know, the center post breaks off or, you know, whatever. I mean, go down the list. There's a bunch of things. Yeah, people love to watch our videos, and uh, I'll get a comment two and a half months after I've reviewed something, and the guy just got it, and he'll be like, this thing's a piece of shit. Everybody knows that. And it's like, yeah, everybody knows it two and a half months after I published the video, but, you know, we just didn't know. We only know what we know the moment we're reviewing the products, you know. And uh, I get one device, one tank, one one shot at making the clearest, most honest review that I can, and it's not always perfect, and I'm not always right, you know. Well, the reality is, is this is that, it, you know, this is the problem, is that a new device comes out Tuesday, and there's a review Tuesday afternoon on it, <laughs> or a preview or whatever they want to call it. I mean, there's no way of, of knowing. And the problem is, is this, in your position, is that there's absolutely, and I know this, and I've criticized a lot of people for it, but I understand it. I just want the world to know it, is that if you don't review it, then by the time 10 other reviewers have already reviewed it, and yours is right and theirs is different, you see what I'm saying? Nobody even cares to watch your video. Yeah, stupid. I agree. There's always a risk, especially like when you're trying to build your channel. Um, there is a direct correlation between views and subscribers. Um, the more views you get, obviously, the more subscribers you get. There, you know, if I look at my analytics data, you can see as my subscribers have gone up, my views have gone up too. Um, and in order to get views, you have to have new products and be one of the first to release the video on the product. The problem is to get respect, legitimacy, um, people that believe that your opinion matters, you better do a thorough review because if you're full of shit and you're the first to drop the video and then 10 other people behind you are say the opposite, you're going to look stupid and <laughs> your channel's not going to grow. Well, you know, I was just, when you just mentioned that, I was just thinking uh, about the Limo V2. Yeah. I, I, you've heard what um, Matt. Uh, Rip, Rip said, or was it Matt? Matt. It was Matt. Yeah. And I'm thinking, I, I know, I'm assuming you have a beta, I'm assuming he has a beta as well, which brings up another point, I've criticized Phil about this a bunch, is that a lot of times you guys are reviewing beta devices, and the problem is what's a beta device versus what comes out in the public. In other words, the problems you're having, that's the whole purpose of the beta, is to fix the problems so the public version has got a fixed version of it. So the problem is is that what you're reviewing is often not exactly what people are getting other than maybe the way it looks. You see and they don't clarify when they send us products if oh, it is a beta it. or not. I'm, you know, I'm yeah, starting to get a better that. idea of what's going on there, and I would imagine that's maddening for you. Like the Kanger sub tank that I have right here, this thing has heads that never even came out on the market that I got. And, you know, I'm two months into vape review and I had like 300 subscribers. And I'm like, oh my God, I have a sub tank. Nobody in the world has this thing. And it was like Christmas. I, I did this proud review and I was so happy with myself, pat myself on the back like I'd arrived. And, and all of a sudden, like, Two weeks later, Matt's like, "Yeah, I'm not going to do a review yet because uh, you know they're 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 in the process of redoing the entire system." <laughs> you know, it was a nightmare. Don't even tell you anything. Well, you know, the, the funny bottom, thing is, is this the bottom is the, the, coils. Yeah, the bottom the the uh, horizontal coils. Yeah, Ryan, question. Uh, Rip Trippers put up a uh, basically a sneak peek of the Limo Two, and he had said that uh, his leaks when he fills it, but then it stops. Did you experience that? I have not experienced that one bit, and I've gone through at least 10 tankfuls. Uh, I think with the Limo, two things. Number one, with these new top fill tanks, you have to make sure that you close off the airflow at the bottom perfectly when you open the top so you keep that suction going at the top with the air. Um, also, there's something to be said about the juice in the tank, and they say this in the uh, instructions, and I wanted to comment to Matt, but I haven't had a chance. 
you know, hold on. Where's my Where's my Lima two? Uh, right here. This is the deal. When the when the juice level gets down to about mm, maybe a sixth of the way down toward the bottom, you have to refill it before it gets to the bottom bottom because the weight of the juice in the tank itself acts to push the juice up the juice channels onto the onto the uh, wicking. So you don't want to run it dry. The Kanger Tech uh, Nano had the same problem. This one here, if I'm yes. Uh, if you get it right about where the top of the coil is, and you just put it down, it'll the whole thing will leak out. Yeah, mine doesn't do that though. Yours I haven't do that. I mean, I have literally like screwed the bejesus out of the coil to make certain it's on there. And it, anytime I, I don't know what your what's your VG on there. This uh, one here is uh, sixty forty in the nano right now. That's about what I'm what I'm running, and uh, I, well, I, 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 I had the problem. Yeah, I got the weight. I've, I've noticed that phenomenon with almost all tanks, and to be honest with you, I don't think there's anything they can do about it. I think we're fighting physics at that point. What's crazy, yeah. the craziest build of the week that I have is this this uh, Kay Lannis that everyone thought was an April Fool's joke yesterday. Uh, you, I know you guys watched this review, but uh, I'm telling you guys, I can leave the airflow control open. I can open up the top. I'll do it right now. I can open up the top on this thing. You see bubbles flying up to the top, right? And it's it's wide open. I mean, the juice is right there. I could put this back on, and I can go back to vaping, and it doesn't leak or drip or anything. I've had this sideways in my car. It, it blows my mind that this is out, and the other genuine tanks haven't even released yet with top fill on, on the pre-made coil head devices. Well, you bring up another point about coils. Oh, my God. I swear. Clear misers are driving me nuts. I mean, I, I got to the point where, unless it's really outstanding, I, and I'm one of those dudes, if you look behind me, you can see behind me over there. I mean, those are all tanks, with the exception of one. And um, the problem is, is this. I'm okay with buying a Clearo as long as they put an RBA. If they don't put an RBA and it's not a popular brand, I won't buy it. And, and they have to start understanding that. I know they want to get them out there and people are going to buy them, but there's a lot of people who are going to say, hell no, because they can't get a coil. Now, if, I can, if you can use a coil from, let's say, Kanger or, or Atlantis, Aspire or whatever, then I'm okay with that. But, you know, who wants that warehouse, you know, 50 coils in their drawer just because you got five different, you know, tanks? Yeah. Major and not only that, right but then the vaping store doesn't want to carry them either because they're like, oh shit, you know, V2 just came out, and what am I going to do? I've got a crate of this crap sitting in my uh, you know, warehouse, and, and so they won't even carry them. Yeah. So it's messed up because two weeks later, version 2 comes out. That's it. That's it. you got coils that you're going to you know, toss out and throw away. Now, it reminds me of the PC market back when you know, all, the new, the new, all the new RAM models were coming out and all the new uh, chipsets were coming out. And, uh, you know, local stores like, uh, what was that one store, uh, PC uh, Warehouse? I don't know. It was one of the local shops. All the big retail stores that sold true current boards and uh, processors, they went out of business because it was too much inventory to keep in stock. And within a month, the, the value of that chip was half of what it, what it should have been. And it's tough for a small business, which most of our local vape shops are, to keep up with having the overhead of having the values drop so quickly. Yeah, that's I impossible agree. to maintain a business and maintain solvency like that. You know, it's just it's just not a good business model. Well, I think the th the safe three right now. This is just my opinion as of today. Are Kanger, Aspire, and actually that Arctic is. I, I I'm wanting to hate it, but I love it. I'm wanting to hate it, but I love it. You know, uh, and and my vape store does carry the uh, the coils for it, but very few others. I mean, for sub tanks anyway. <laughs> Well, I've noticed that uh, Arctic is like almost everybody's got it, the coils. So. Yeah, I, well, you know, I can't say anything bad about it. I mean, it's like the Kanger Mini. I mean, it's they're pretty damn good. But I've heard, though, with the Arctic, there's a lot of people saying that uh, they're getting a funky taste with their coils. I had one person, uh, one of my subscribers, I think it was Tom Pavlu. He had actually messaged me and told me he bought 10 packs he went oh, through. Right. Each, yeah, he's, he's another hobbyist. And uh, they all just tasted like garbage. Yeah. Did he have that rubber taste or something? Yeah, like a funky... Well, with the LVC coils... Taste or something like that. From the LVC coil, like I said, the, my Delta, 
I'll, I'll love my Delta to death, but I will not put another LVC coil on it again. I like I like the RBA base. Yeah. That's what I've got. I've got an RBA. Yeah. You know, let me tell you this: if if the, if they didn't have the RBA, this would be sitting in a drawer. Yeah, I'm with you. And that, that's cool. There you go. Yeah. RBA base. I, when I got the coils, and I didn't like. I mean, I liked them, but they burnt quick. And I had it on the side. As soon as I got I the, the RBA, rubber taste. I had the rubber taste after my second tank. Yeah. On two coils in a row. I said, okay. That's it. I'm done. But the problem is, I heard that Kanger just recently had the same problem. So when you say the Arctic had it, I'm, I'm not going to be surprised about it. I mean, I'm just, and that's the problem. You know, you bring in another point. You can go ahead and do a review on something and have coils that work, and the next dude that gets his, they don't, and it's terrible. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I totally agree. And and now, so the solution to it all is is if they have an RBA, I don't care if their coils suck. That's fine. I'll use the RB. If it's a good tank and it makes sense, I'll still buy the thing. So I think in the long run, I think that they're kind of, you know, cutting themselves off a little short in in, in popcorn style, uh, you know, our uh, tanks. Clear there, somebody had mentioned in the comments that they should come up with a standard for the the threading for the coil heads, and also the chimney height would have to be added too. Well, that's that's like K-fund standardization. Well, the thing is, they won't use the same coil because they want to capitalize off the money, you know. It's, it's, let me let me play it to you in another way. I'm going to show you something real simple. The simplest thing we take for granted. You see this? See the 510? I have right. yet to see a standardized friggin' 510. Now, right. will it screw in? Yeah, but the length and then the positive, it's all over the place. Yeah. I mean, for crying out loud, by by now they need to standardize the 510. Yeah. Or am I wrong with that? All right, guys. Well, we're at 10.56 p.m. Time always flies when we're having fun on the vape team. Um, yes. Let's do this. Let's uh, let's each one of us say our goodbyes, say I love yous, and um, give your shout-outs if you'd like, and then we'll we'll see each other back here next week again. And, and David, it was a pleasure having you on here. It's always been a pleasure commenting back and forth with you. I thank you for watching my videos because it means a lot. And uh, I look forward to having you back on the show in the future. And actually, hopefully, uh, I'd, I'd love to see a, a David channel on YouTube because I think that you present well and you have a lot, to, a lot of good things to say. Well, I really appreciate that. And, um, you know, my, my daughter's kind of been pushing me in that direction. And if I've got a shout-out to anybody, it's two people. Uh, my father, when he got, you know, unfortunately he had a heart attack and he passed away after you know, years and years and years of cigarette smoking, and thank God I quit. I'll tell you the reason that I quit it, and I think this is an important story. Everybody's got a good story. Unfortunately, I was a cigarette smoker, and when you've got children, guess what they see? Monkey see, monkey do. My daughter started smoking. I caught her smoking. I told her this, that I'm going to take you down to the vape store. I don't care what we spend. We're going to quit, and we're going to get on this vaping uh, today. And we did that, and so I'm, you know, very pleased about it. Uh, I've really enjoyed all of your work. Uh, I mean, every single one of you guys. I mean, you all add uh, a really good spin, a really good element. You each have got your own little niche, and you're bringing a lot of in good information uh, to the vaping community. I'm just hoping that your channels, you know, take off. I mean, uh, I really enjoyed this, and hopefully I can do it again in the future. I'd love it. Thank you. Mikey, yes. the man we all love. <laughs> uh, shout out to... A all my subscribers and a shout out to the vape team subscribers. Shout you guys all out. And I'm gonna hit this shit for you guys right now. That was for all my subscribers and keep a lookout. I got some nice reviews coming up. K box with the tutor tu tutorial, sorry, of uh, the coils in the sub tank. I got the troll RDA coming out. I got uh, the freak show mini too, so well, thanks for hitting that shit like I, Ike hits Tina, all right? <laughs> Bucket, what's that. up, brother? All right, um, you know, I'm not going to bother doing a shout-out because, well, I'll do a universal shout-out to all my loyal subscribers who've uh, stood by me the past couple months as the channel's been expanding rapidly. Um, big thanks to you guys for supporting my channel and, uh, you know, helping me along here. You know, I'm, I'm reaching about 1,300 subscribers now, which I wouldn't have even imagined a couple months ago. I mean, that's just tremendous to me. It's really nothing in the grand scheme of things, but to go from, you know, six, seven hundred where I was a month ago to thirteen hundred, you know, almost overnight, 
is just amazing. You know, I know the quality of my videos has gone up, but it, it's still, I mean, it's, it's kind of mind-blowing in my, in my opinion. Um, <clears throat> having said all that, um, yeah, that's really all I got, guys. <laughs> Thanks to everybody for supporting me, and uh, it, it's a pleasure hanging out with you guys here live. And David, you know, David and I have been talking for about a month or five weeks or something like that. And it's just, it's a lot of fun to just have him live here with you guys and, like, all my friends together in one place. I think he all should right. do his own show, basically talking about reviewers. <laughs> oh, God. God, no. <laughs> oh, I Don't even pay you. you like that, huh? <laughs> my, heart just, my heart just skipped a beat. <laughs> all right, guys. Well, it's 11 o'clock. Thanks for watching. We will see you guys next week, same time, same place, and we'll see you here. Have a good one. Thanks. Thank <laughs> you.